This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and M Now Biscuits. Prime Minister Marape reveals PNG US agenda. PNG hosted successful Pacific Islands Forum. And CIMC held a task force meeting today. Good evening. You're watching National MTV News. I'm Grace Papiali. Thank you for joining us. Prime Minister James Marape arrives today after attending the U.S. Pacific Island Summit in the Washington, D.C. in the United States. Prime Minister briefs the media on the topic of discussions with the U.S. President Joe Biden. Prime Minister James Marape highlighted that the meeting with President Biden went well with a lot of positive outcomes. Marape revealed that climate change was one of the matter raised of which the president has made commitment to assist. Let me also say uh, that President Biden uh, possibly is the first U.S. president to admit that uh, USA as a big carbon footprint holder must take greater responsibility and sees, sees Pacific as uh, it, its uh, res primary responsibility and so has committed to ensure that uh, the support program that is earmarked for Pacific Island nations uh, comes unimpeded and uh, ensure that uh, Pacific Island nations are given their due support. Marape highlighted that the president also made commitment to ensure Pacific Island nations will have easy access to the Green Climate Fund. I will re relate to him that accessibility to Green Climate Fund uh, that is meant to help small island states and those who are struggling is uh, still, not uh, still not accessible and is harder. Uh, he did commit to ensure that the accessibility is uh, opened up for nations who is supposed to be supported by this facility, uh, given access to these funds. Marape announced that he has proposed a debt for nature swap, which the U.S. has pledged commitment to look into it. The lending policies uh, 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 re looked at and restructured the architecture uh, behind IMF and World Bank lending policies uh, re looked at in respect to uh, those who are victims to climate change and small island states and developing nations and uh, USA committed to carry, carry, uh, carry this conversation into where it matters most, uh, into IMF and World Bank uh, boards to ensure that uh, lending program is geared towards supporting uh, small island states and uh, not to give them further burden but to lighten the load so to speak. And uh, that was something positive that emerged also out of this. Uh, should I say PNG also proposed that a debt for nature swap be organized, uh, relooked at. That simply means the value of our ocean and forest as great carbon reservoir, carbon sink, uh, be quantified, relooked at, and how this could be offset in terms of the present level of uh, uh, borrowings we have with these international lenders. Marape also revealed that they have requested the U.S. to clear the World War II rallies and settle grievances in the Marshall Island and called for Pacific waters to be protected. Meanwhile, Marape announced that he will be visiting Beijing in China next month upon the invitation of the Chinese president. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Following the declaration of El Nino warning by the National Weather Service, Prime Minister James Marape announced that the government will make it their primary responsibility to address this national disaster. This announcement was made at the news conference held in Port Mosby today. Uh, government responsibility, if uh, El Nino... Uh well, uh, El Nino tax rule, we, uh, we, we've been given advice that El Nino might happen. Uh, government is preparing to ensure we assist communities who are affected by El Nino. And we live within, uh, we, we live within the reach of international communities also. 
Uh, we also indicate this uh, might happen in the Western Pacific and the Pacific Island nations. Uh, I'm sure international communities would be willing to step in, but at the moment, it is government's primary responsibility. We will assess and we will ensure we help those who are affected. The districts will be engaged and the provinces to, to ensure that they uh, utilize resources that are coming to them, but government will overlay with additional resources. Meanwhile, Prime Minister James Marape revealed that by election for the Maprik District and Day Open District will not be held immediately, highlighting that ample time needs to be given to show respect to the passing of the two leaders, late Gabriel Capris and late Stephen Pim. But White House uh, uh, relate back to us. That Prime Minister James Marape revealed to the media today that ample time needs to be given to the grieving people of Maprik District in the East Sipik Province and the Open District in the Western Islands Province to mourn the passing of the two members of the Parliament, respectively late Gabriel Caprice and late Stephen Pym, prior to hosting the by-election for the two districts. Uh, well, some people are asking, well, when will by-election happen? Uh, our custom and tradition is that uh, leaders have died, we are not in a rush for by-elections to take place. Uh, sufficiently, the provincial administrations are there uh, to take care of the, the respective districts' concerns. So I just want to relay our sympathy to these two electorates particularly, uh, to know that uh, uh, they are leaders on the opposite side of the floor, but uh, they always vote with government on our major bills, and I just want to express from the government side our total sympathy uh, to the families of both uh, late uh, Honorable Gabriel Capris and late uh, Honorable Stephen Pimp. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Marape urged people of Bougainville, Wewak and Ligab to behave and allow the normal conduct of election. Electorates that are going through the process of by-election, I just want to say appeal to people in those electorates, uh, Ligab, uh, and, and uh, not Bougainville. Uh, there's elections that are taking place, uh, will take place very shortly. Uh, we uh, appreciate all the candidates that have contested. Uh, we, uh, and for Pangu, uh, from the Pangu perspective, we have uh, one candidate each in the two electorates. But we uh, say we value all the other candidates that are running. Uh, it's preferential voting. Uh, those who will be voting for Pangu candidates, please spread your second and third to uh, our coalition pa uh, partners who also, who also have filled in candidates and running. Likewise, we hope that the uh, uh, conduct of elections are taking place peacefully. Uh, we will overlay in all by-elections that are coming up uh, good support to electoral commission as well as good support to police to ensure uh, protection of the due, due uh, electoral process uh, takes place and uh, the results are results that depicts people's choices. Marape made this statement during the news conference at the Jacksons International Airport after arriving from U.S. today. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. The Minister of Information and Communication Technology, Timothy Masiu, has commended the Department of Information and Communication Technology and its key partners in hosting two of the largest ICT conferences in the region. Masiu made his statement at the NICTA head office in Port Mosby. PNG has hosted the Pacific ICT Minister's Dialogue on the 28th of August to the 29th. Following that was the Asia-Pacific Telecommunity 16th Policy Regulation Forum for the Pacific on the 30th of August to the 1st of September. Both events were described as the first for the country to play the role as host. Therefore, Minister Masiu has commended the ICT department and other key partners for making the forums a success. The resounding success of the two important conferences in Port Mosby has sent to the world of ICT uh, that Papua New Guinea is ready is ready to move on in terms of progress because Papua New Guinea is not being selfish. We want to also make sure that our brothers and sisters in the Pacific, they are also moving with us. They are also coming with us. 
And so we make true to what we believe in, like leaving no man behind. Uh, filling up the gap of the digital divide and talking about the affordabilities, the accessibilities, the inclusivities. Nita CEO Kila Gulavui also gave his remarks. Indeed, uh, there's been an honor for Nita to be a partner as part of the ministry under the leadership of Honorable Timothy Masiu in bringing connectivity to our people through ICT. And our collaboration through those events is indeed a reflection of our desire for a common goal to reach our people wherever they are through ICT. I will leave those remarks to our Honourable Minister as the journey that we, we are part of and extending that vision to our Pacific uh, community. And uh, we in NATO do appreciate and acknowledge the support of each and every one of you. Former petitioner of the Southern Highlands Province election petition, Peter Nupiri, has announced that following his defeat in the Supreme Court, he will file for a five-man bench to review the Supreme Court decision that was handed down last week by Justice Anis, which resulted in the case being struck out, and incumbent governor for Southern Highlands Province, William Powie, remains as governor of the province. He made this announcement today in Port Mosby. Was elected under special circumstances. Nupiri has expressed his frustration on the court's decision that was handed down last week, Monday, the 18th of September 2023. What I am uh, not happy about is that the review was on the basis that there was a decision made on the basis of law, on the organic law in Section 209, uh, requesting that I should have filed the the, the petition together with the payment. Uh, I am baffled and I am quite disappointed that some judges in the judiciary are continuing to apply the stricter approach to handling election petitions. He added that he will be filing for a review on the Supreme Court's decision. I'm going to file for a review in the full bench and ask the, uh, the Supreme Court by way of a full bench to determine this. Nupiri's grievance comes after his election petition got completely struck out of the national court and claimed that the courts must review sections 208 and 9 of the organic law on provincial and local level government elections. This is unnecessarily causing a lot of grief to supporters and candidates who are seeking justice after some electorate, some elections were rigged. Meanwhile, he has urged the people of Southern Highlands to remain at peace now that the elections are over. Furthermore, an appeal was made to Governor Powi to deliver services to the province. Moreover, William Powi has made the announcement that Unition is paramount at this time for service delivery for the province after his win over Nupiri last week Monday. National MTV News continues after the break with more stories. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. The Consultative Implementation and Monitoring Council today held a Terms of Reference meeting with national and regional civil society organizations from different sectors. The purpose of this meeting is to guide the work of the National Task Force in its effort to review and formulate the state civil society partnership policy framework until it is endorsed. 
development and religion. So I cannot... Uh... The formation of the task force resulted from a two-day workshop chaired by CIMC and the Department of National Planning and Monitoring at the end of 2012 in Ley. The team then was building sustainable partnerships for development. Members of the National Task Force are comprised of civil society organizations, government, development partners and CIMC as the facilitator. Wallis Yakam, the executive officer of CIMC and the chairwoman of today's Terms of Reference meeting, gave an outline of today's brief. Civil society and government, um, so we have a particular um, a uh, space or forum for civil society to come and engage with government. So CIMC facilitates that, and it's called uh, State Civil Society Partnership. And we have initiated this particular uh, thing about 10 years ago, and during that time, um, civil society has effective development partners. Um, they were concerned that uh, government hasn't been recognizing them. Yakam also mentioned the role the CIMC plays as the facilitator. It is set, set up by an NEC decision uh, 20, over 20 years ago um, to maintain or to, do, uh, to provide um, a national uh, consultative policy, public policy dialogue platform um, so that our private sector, civil society, churches, development partners, um, they can have the opportunity to uh, discuss openly what their views are in terms of public policy, whether it's in the development uh, side or whether it's at the uh, implementation process or reporting they want to engage with. The state CSO National Task Force membership is made up of the government, which includes education, health, Department of Justice and Attorney General, Department of National Planning and Monitoring, and CSO includes disability, faith-based women and youth, and church. There are also regional CSO representatives from other regions as well. Donors and other development partners are also part of the task force membership. The task force is co-chaired by CIMC and the Department of National Planning and Monitoring. Tamara Agavi, National MTV News. Tadiro Primary School in the nation's capital is gearing for their upcoming grade 8 exams. Speaking to this newsroom yesterday during a donation drive by the Chinese Navy ship Chi Giguang, head teacher Cecilia Kelgai, Cecilia Kelgai had this to say regarding their grade 8 students' preparations. The grade examinations commence on Monday, 23rd of October, and will end on the 26th of October. We are, uh, we are approaching the examinations in a week's time for our grade 8s. Our grade 8 students have been equipped with uh, take-home assignments, projects, and homework for them to do at home so that the teachers, when they come back, they will go through with them with the revision of everything. And we are looking forward for the exams to come in a week's time. Senior Medical Officer from the National Department of Health, Dr. Petronia Kaima, urged parents to ensure their children to get vaccinated in order to be protected from any forms of diseases going forward. This is following reports unfolded by the UNFPA that PNG is at the bottom when it comes to immunization. PNG's vaccination rates have decreased since 2012 to date and stands at 38 percent, which is below the average amongst other nations in the Asia-Pacific region. Senior Medical Officer Dr. Petronia Keim urged all parents to make it their priority to get their children vaccinated so to avoid the risk of children getting sick. The important thing is that um, we need to make sure that our message must be very clear uh, to actually inform uh, the mothers and, and the public to bring their children. Vaccination is very important. Vaccination, uh, as we've covered this morning, prevents a lot of diseases, a lot of childhood diseases, illnesses. And so uh, with this kind of trend, 
um, you know, we want to, we don't want to put our uh, children at risk uh, of those childhood illnesses like, you know, measles and polio uh, and other diseases. So really we want to make sure that uh, as much as possible, uh, bring the message out to the public, inform the public that uh, vaccination is very important for children. Dr. Kaim highlighted on the reasons pertaining to the drop in the immunization rate of the country. Continue to encourage the, the mothers and the parents. It's very important, uh, no matter what. Uh, so there's a lot of factors. It can be the social factors, you know, economic factors, the availability and the accessibility. So all this contribute to, uh, to the outcome of the success of this immunization. Kaim says it is incumbent on the government to ensure these services are accessible to people at the community level, so to improve on the statistics. From the government, we need to make sure that these services are available and accessible. Uh, as the population grows, we have not uh, really you know, expanded uh, uh, the infrastructure, moving the um, availability of the services right into the uh, communities to meet the demand. So what, you know, uh, it, it's important that I think from us, we need to make sure that uh, we need to start having these outreach programs to bring the services, humanization programs back into the, the community. This issue was highlighted during an information session hosted by UNFPA in partnership with the National Department of Health, National AIDS Council Secretariat, World Vision, UNAIDS, UNICEF and WHO. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. The Cheshire Disability Services PNG received a donation of 10,000 kina from the Friends and One Talks of the organization. The Friends and One Talks of Cheshire Disability Services PNG consists of corporate companies such as SPPNG Hunters, Abus Nakumu, Santos PNG, Newcrest PNG, and Raswin Integrated Solutions. According to Ruth Waram, the external communications manager for Newcrest PNG, the CDS PNG is one of the leading charitable organizations that play a vital role in caring for people living with disabilities. Since it is a non-government organization, they often receive support from donors. The Chisa Disability Services is a non-government organization, so it relies on support and funding from donors, you know, uh, support both in cash and kind to um, help them with the programs that they run here. So it's a critical program that they run for, you know, members of our community. Who the idea of a babaki fundraising was discussed between Newcrest PNG and CDS PNG to raise funds to go towards supporting the Cheshire Disability Services PNG, which saw all partners come together to ensure this fundraising eventuates. The fundraising was held at Santos Football Stadium on the 12th of August that coincided with the last PNG SP Hunters home game. Utilized our sponsorship with the SP PNG Hunters for the 2023 season and uh, we um, asked if we could organize a barbecue at the um, Santos National Football St Stadium this year during the last Hunters uh, home game for the season proper. From the fundraising, a total of 3,000 kina was raised. A kind gesture from Santos PNG and Newcrest PNG, who are also founded partners, topped up the remaining, which has seen the donation done today. CDS PNG General Manager Benson Hahambu said the donation done today will go towards assisting the centre in delivering their programs. Uh, Community-based rehabilitation program area number two, uh, the inclusive education program area number three, uh, residential care and protection, and program area number four, livelihoods empowerment, uh, for nine months now. Gladys Killer, National MTV News. Now looking at the Nest Fund market report, the Kina closed lower at 0.2740 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.2665 US dollars, 0.4173 Australian dollars, 0.2463 Euro, 
39.51 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher, coffee closed lower, cocoa closed lower, copper closed lower, palm oil closed lower, crude oil is trading higher, copper closed lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading lower, the All Ordinaries is trading lower. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. You're watching National MTV News. A 42-meter footbridge that will serve coffee farmers in Omkolai in the Gumini district of Simbu province was officially opened on Tuesday, September 26. 26, 2023. The footbridge is a government-funded project under the CIC Coffee Access Road project with an investment of over 500,000 kina. The opening of the footbridge was witnessed by Coffee Industry Corporation senior management team, Simbu provincial government officials and the local community in Omkolai. <laughs> According to caretaker Chief Executive Officer Stephen Tumae, he said the footbridge will assist the Minimbi Maril people to bring their coffee from the other side of Maril River to the roadside to be brought to the market. He added that not only coffee farmers will benefit, but the nearby communities will use the bridge to cross over to access basic goods and services. Representing the landowners in the area, Max Maima said many lives have been lost lost whilst crossing the Muriel River over the years and the footbridge is a blessing to them. He thanked CIC for bringing this vital development to their community. Tumaya said that the footbridge was previously identified under the World Bank funded PPAP project in 2019. However, due to lack of funding, it never eventuated. With the assistance from the national government, CIC carried on the project to ensure the footbridge was completed to assist farmers in the Bokil and Polma area where majority of the coffee farmers are. There are more than 2,000 plus coffee farmers in the area with more acres of coffee farms cultivated. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Women from Labuta in Nawai district attending the Yabing Women's Convention at Mudzim Station in Makam district were privileged to receive support from their local MP, Theo Pelgen. Mr. Pelgen donated food rations as well as logis logistic support for the women who are attending the convention. According to Mr. Pelgan, this is the continuous support from the district for women and church-related programs. A total of 100 rice bags were donated, as well as funding allocated for organizing transport. Supporting such activities is a priority for Nawai District Development Authority, which acknowledges the spiritual needs of the people as it is important to maintain good order and peace in the community, which is paramount. Women are managers of the households and the assistance given to them is to provide access to attend spiritual growth events that will allow them to enrich their family. Mr. Pelgen highlighted that under his term as the Member of Parliament representing the people of Nawai District, he will continue to support church activities regardless of denomination. Any form of assistance, either small or significant, will be delivered to the people to enhance the spiritual needs. This support was coordinated by NDDA Women's Representative Rebecca Michael, who traveled with a woman to the convention location to ensure all the support was given. Gladys Skila, National MTV News. For the first time, the landowners of the new Pogara will have a group of companies run under the Ari Group Holdings Limited aimed to sustain the landowners in the future. 
this is the way forward for the landowners to finally own the companies. Now, operating under the Ari Group Holdings Limited are eight different companies covering sectors such as mining, construction, aviation, transport and others. Now, this company, once the start of the mining operations in Pogera, will be 100% owned by the Pogera landowners. In the uh, launching uh, to be conducted inside, uh, there are several uh, service companies that will also be introduced. Uh, and one is uh, mining, mining services, RE mining services, again 100% owned by the landowner companies. Uh, uh, RE power, uh, you may have had uh, the, the uh, landowner executives uh, talk about power supply to the mine uh, by an entity owned by the landowners. Uh, there is a power source uh, uh, separate from the uh, IDES power supply. Uh, that the landowners have been working over the uh, since last year and that will be revealed today. Uh, there are also partnerships to be signed with aviation companies. Now the consultant for the Ari group of companies, Carl Yalo, added that for the last 30 years the Pogera landowners didn't have any company to fall back on. But this time around, moving forward, the landowners will have several companies operating and owned by the landowners themselves. Uh, a landowner does not have a three-bedroom house with uh, electricity and running water. Uh, and after 50 years, that is still the same story. So it means we are not doing it right. Uh, we need to find a better way of uh, bringing development to our community so that uh, the landowners are seen as the real beneficiaries of a project. And that is the hope, uh, that we, through this, uh, we are able to open the eyes of key stakeholders like the developer, I like the government that we need to do better for our people, for the, for the landowners particularly. Contract them before. I've been working for the company, I've been working for the I'm 30 years, I've been out. So I've said, Lord, I've said, man, I've been fed. So I've been working in the world, I've been working. But now, I've been working for the business 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 now, now the successful launching of the meeting with the Pogera landowners, the directors and the investors themselves here at Delay International Hotel, as well as the gracing of the Kenwood trucks here in Lay Morobe province will be something the landowners say is a milestone achievement moving forward into the future that will sustain the people of Pogera in the next 20 to 30 years. Godwin Eki, National MTV News, Lay. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sport. Stay with us. Trukai Sport. Welcome to Trukai Sports. Papua New Guinea Defence Force soccer team and the Chinese Navy cadets have completed, competed in a friendly football match at the Tarama Aquatic Centre today in Port Mosby. As part of their visit to PNG, Chinese Navy cadets played against the PNG Defence Force in a friendly football match at the Tarama Aquatic Centre today in Port Moresby. Apart from the friendly match between PNG DF and Chinese Navy cadets, a soccer team from the Chinese companies around Port Mosby and a team from the Chinese embassy led by their ambassador Zhang Fanwa also took part in the friendly match today. A Chinese Navy cadet and the coach for the PNG DF soccer team gave their insights on the match. 
I am from the Chinese Navy. Today we have a friendly competition with the PNGDF and other we have the Chinese ambassadors and the Chinese enterprise. And later we are going to have the final game with the PNGDF. I think we can know each other better and strengthen the communication and friendship with each other just through on the football match. One of the commanders um, um, uh, progressive uh, for for PNGDF with the uh, relationship between the two countries, the PNG uh, Defense Soccer Club uh, taking part to as one of the uh, uh, team to uh, have the uh, uh, relationship between the two countries, Chinese and uh, PNGDF and PNG. This friendly football match aims to strengthen practical cooperation and mutual trust between China and PNG in terms of military cooperation. Luis Mangu, Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. The weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region, Port Mosby City, partly cloudy with possible evening patchy drizzles, Darufu, squally showers and drizzles, Kerama, some rain showers and possible thunderstorms, Alatau, mostly fine, Popondeta brief showers. In the Mombasa region, Lay City cloudy with evening showers and possible thunderstorms. Medang partly cloudy with evening brief showers. Wiwak partly cloudy with few showers. Vanimo some showers and possible thunderstorms. In the New Guinea Island region, Lorengo and Kavian rain showers and possible thunderstorms. Kokopo Rabal, windy with squally rain showers. Kimbe, windy with few showers. Buka, some showers and possible thunderstorms. In the Highlands region, Mount Hagen City, rain showers and possible thunderstorms. Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg, some showers and possible thunderstorms. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. And that wraps up the new sports and weather for Thursday, the 28th of September 2023. From all of us here, pleasant viewing, good night. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets.